I asked Tucker to bring us the manliest person on staff. Yeah. And when he told me that Jeff Hobson was unavailable, we went and we said, we got to get Judd on here. We have the same haircut, so that's good. It kind of reeks of masculinity. Yeah. I love it. Uh-huh. He's the, I like having him around. He's one of the few people I'm taller than <laughs> on staff, so that's a that's a bonus. He helps your confidence a little bit. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. We've got an event coming up. Uh, it's the Men's Crawfish Boil and Barbecue Throwdown that's happening on June 17th from 4 to 7 p.m. here mm-hmm. at the Heights. Right. It's going to be awesome. Bunch of guys, good friends, good food, and even better time in the summer at the Heights. It's going to be great. Great. Um, this isn't just a plug for that event, though. I want to talk with you about why we do men's ministry here at the Heights, okay. why we put such importance on it, why we value it so much. So let me let you cook a little bit. Tell me why men's ministry is important to Judd Hardage. Because there's a few reasons. I, I think um, I think it's the most neglected ministry in the church. Um even growing up, my dad uh, was in ministry for 60 years, and um, and I don't remember any men's event that he they they would do. I think a yearly pancake breakfast or something. Yeah. Um, but the the man's job was to provide, sure, and to make sure that his kids were in church. But there, I think men kind of got left out of the equation because I I mean I really don't don't necessarily know why except except for the fact that women love being together Mm -hmm. but what i have seen in my life and through the years is that men desire that just as much we just don't vocalize it Mm -hmm. um because it's not real manly sure it's not real manly to say hey guys i just want to hang out with y'all it's a vulnerable thing to say right and and i think that that stigma is gone um i think that we've ushered in a whole new era with that but i think there's just a desire within guys with just dudes to spend time with with like-minded people. And um, there are conversations that you have with guys that you just don't have with your wife, you don't have with your kids, you don't have with your coworkers, but when you get a bunch of guys together and you can grunt and growl and 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 you've got a pocket of guys talking about cars and you got a pocket of guys talking about sports and and those are things that we have to have. We have to have that outlet. And as it it is coming to the forefront now, I think, at the heights. I think it's you can see that is so evidenced in those Wednesday mornings. Because I, um, I'll be honest, David, when when you started all this, I or y'all started all of this, I, in my mind, I was like, I give it six months. <laughs> you know, I, it's, gonna, it's going to slowly fade out. You're going to lose energy around it. The guys are going to lose energy around it. And that has been, it's been the exact opposite because I think men have found this connection on those Wednesdays and they don't want to miss. Yeah. Well, I, and I think when you said like-minded men, I mean, we get back to really what our purpose is as men, what God created us to be. God created us in his image. We go back to Genesis 127. So God created man in his image in the image of God, created man in his own image in the image of God. He created them male and female. He created them. If he created us in his own image, he created us for three things. One, to represent him on this earth as vice regents, to rule the earth, subdue it, multiply. He created us to be responsible for this earth, responsible for people on this earth. Um, but he also created us to live in relationship with him, with our wives, mm-hmm. with our friends, with our neighbors. Representation, responsibility, and relationship. Right. Those three things that God has created us for. I feel like what we're trying to do here with Men's Ministry of the Heights is pushing into and trying to get us to understand those three things, those three purposes that God's called us to, to represent him, to be responsible for things, to take ownership of things and to live in relationship, good relationship with him, with our wives, with our neighbors. Tell me more about how you understand those three things playing out in your own life, but also just, you've done this for a while. You've been in ministry for a while. What happens when men step out of that? 
no representation, no responsibility, no relationships. What typically happens in your experience? They go off the reservation. Yeah, they do. Uh, let's just be honest. Mm-hmm. If you are not, um, you said plug, you know, plugged into God first. The I mean, vertical relationship. Yeah. So let's yeah. let's let's put the vertical aside. The only reason I say that is because I think in this context that's a given. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, you know, I we're having this event at a church, right? Okay. So, yeah. so mm-hmm. I, you know, I want to put that vertical aside and 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 talk more about what God has created us for on this earth while we're here, and it is to build relationship with others. It is to walk alongside others and help others. I mean, if, if you look at the formation of the church, the entire New Testament is all about relationship. Sure it is. And so when a man turns his back on that, which is our design, he's going to be looking other places for relationship. Which could be? Which could be online websites. Sure. It could be relationships with with people in the office of the opposite sex it can, i mean it, it, you can go a thousand different directions because our mind that's how our minds work we're and wired you, for that relationship we are, we are wired that way we're wired as visual learners i mean that's just who we are mm-hmm. um and so we see something shiny and that's where our eyes go sure right and so um and that takes so many forms good and bad and i think the more people that you can put around you to help you navigate those things together with biblical truth. Um, it's going to make you better across the board. And I, I, like, I love spending time with my wife. I told her it's, it's a weird thing. We're, we're 27 years in now. And, um, I used to love it when she would go on like a business trip or whatever. I was like, this is awesome. I get the house to myself. (laughs) You know, it's, it's, uh, it was just kind of a, you know, an underwear fest, if you will. I'm just walking around with my chips and and drinks and whatever. And how many sports can I watch at once and all of that stuff, right? Um, and but now as I've gotten older, like I don't like her leaving as much. But that being said, of all of the voids that she fills in my life, she still cannot fill the void that I need of spending time with other guys, with other dudes. Um, you and I have talked about this a little bit before. Um, I didn't start off in ministry. I started off as a coach. You started as a football coach. I was yeah. a coach. Yeah, yeah, I coached football. I've coached uh, baseball. I ended up, uh, I actually started off, baseball was where I was going. Mm-hmm. And through a, several winding roads, I ended up, they called me Coach Cush because I ended up coaching golf and I was on the golf course every day at one thirty. It was awesome. Um, but... Um, the thing that I miss the most about coaching mm-hmm. is not the competition on the field. Yeah, it's not, it's not Friday Night Lights. It's not the the squeak of the sneakers on the gym floor or watching a golf team do well, um, which is odd to see, but it's fun. Yeah. Um, sure. What I miss the most about coaching is the camaraderie in the coach's office. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I I mean I could not wait to get out of class and get down to the field house and hang out with my buddies. Mm-hmm. And and I haven't had that as near to that depth when I got into ministry. In fact, when I started at my previous church, we were a startup church, and it was me and the senior pastor. And it was just us two in a storefront office. And it was, this is no fault of his, but it was just, it was brutal. Because I, I was like, I need more relationship. I need to spend time with other guys. And I got with a couple of guys at our old church, and we were like, let's let's do a camping trip. Yeah. And from that formed a very thriving men's ministry, and it filled the void that I had that my wife, my kids, my job, nothing this side of heaven could, could um, you know, I couldn't fill that void, and, and it did. And... And so that's the reason it's so important to me to see what we're doing and what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's Gary talks about this all the time, living out of who you are. Mm -hmm. This is our design. It is. We were designed to live in community. We were designed to know each other and be known by that. I mean, 
And it's why it's so important for us to have these masculine friendships, Mm -hmm. as you said, like-minded friendships here. Um, Keith Lair, he always says, you know, life is is hard. Nobody gets out alive. And the whole thing is that you're going to be raising a family. It's hard. Right. Being a good husband, it's hard. Showing to church and singing and lead, it's hard. And if you're going to charge the hill by yourself and you're getting shot at while you're doing it, well, you got a better chance of surviving and charging the hill if you're doing it with a band of brothers. 100%. And, and I just think that it's not just a matter of, this is what we're designed to do, absolutely. It's also a matter of, it's what we're designed to do, absolutely, and we better do it together, because if we don't do it together, it won't get done. Correct. Correct. Talk more about your relationships with with maybe the comparisons between coaching football and leading men in the church. Cause I, my brother is a football coach as well in Orlando. And I've kind of seen some parallels in terms of forming men on a football team and forming men in the church. Not to say that there's, you know, exact parallels, but at the same time, there is that sense where we're tapping into something of being a part of a team to accomplish a goal together. Sure. Yeah. There's no difference. Yeah. I don't feel like there's any difference mm-hmm. because we're all, equipped in different ways sure we are right and and like i am my wife will tell you this i am the least mechanical person on earth i just what well, maybe besides gary gary well i think that goes without saying right right yes but i we should actually invite him to come to car care oh my gosh yeah he could carry it he's like me we would we would be the rag guys like i would <laughs> can i can i can i wipe off your hands, please, because I really, I don't even know. What... Maybe you and him could change the oil on something. No, that's that never going to happen. But like we we all are, it's, um, we're all equipped in different ways. But guys have a different equipping. Sure we do. And so for, to put us together in a life group is great. You've got different families and different things like that. But it, there's something different when you get a bunch of guys together and they're pulling in the same direction and you i mean you can just accomplish so much and um you know whether it is car care stuff or or there are others that are just flat out pastoral that they know how to pour into others um there are you have your intellectuals you have your guys like randy varnell who are just deep thinkers man i just like going to lunch with guys like that yeah you know just let me hear your thoughts on how you see the church going or how you, and, and they dig down so deep. I'm like, my gosh, I didn't ever think of it that way. I mean, there's, there's so many, it's, it, you know, we're all, um, we're all made different, but we all have the same DNA when it comes to our father absolutely being God. Mm-hmm. And so if we all have that in us as brothers, then we take those different components and you can put those together and it can literally change an entire community. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. L- let's do this one for the road. Okay. You've been married 27 years. Yeah. Um, let's get practical here. What do you say to the guy who's been married for less than 10 years? What have you learned in your journey as a husband that you wish you learned earlier on? You've learned now that you would say to a guy like Man, that. Man, what a great question. Um, and this I have learned in the last five years. Okay, let's how, hear it. How about that? Stop being so stinking proud. Elaborate more. Um, I am. I grew up, and my generation grew up um, at the tail end of the "Don't talk about it." If you don't talk about it, there's nothing wrong. The whole World War II loose lips sink ships. Yes, yes, a thousand percent. Mm-hmm. And and my dad being in ministry, he didn't. And I love my father. He is my hero. But we weren't allowed to be anything but perfect. And we didn't talk about our issues. I didn't talk about, you know, me sneaking out and getting caught and picked up by the police when I was in high school. You know, that didn't get talked about. Um, We didn't talk about my sister and a breakup or what, you know, those things were never talked about. And we certainly didn't talk about major family issues. Sure. Right. So I never talked to my dad 
to this day, I haven't really had a lot of conversations with him about some of the struggles between him and my mom. Mm -hmm. But my mom and I have had major open conversations. Being, she's like, hey, I don't want you to repeat these mistakes. So um, about, gosh, six, eight years ago, um, was hanging out with our life group. And um, the guys were upstairs and the girls were downstairs. And we were we were going through love languages. And, um, but we wanted it to kind of be, you know, let, let the women talk about that sure. stuff and the guys did ours. Mm -hmm. And what came from that was I just, like the Holy Spirit was like, Judge, just talk. And for the first time in my life, and I'm, I'm telling you, I was like 46, 47. I just laid it out there and I said, man, me and Delisa are in, we're in a little bit of a valley right now. And started talking about it and then one of the guys in the group said about this time in my marriage we did the same thing wow and I, and then he starts sharing with me how they got out of that and this was right at the right when i was becoming an empty nester and and all of these things and i'm trying to figure out how to date my wife again and how to how to live life i've had kids in the house our entire life all of these things and we were just bickering and arguing and fighting, and I was just ne not in a good place. And started to talk through that, and they gave me some, we just talked about practical ways to work through it. But what was weird, it wasn't about learning the practical ways. It was the weight that was lifted off of my soul when I just shared with somebody else, hey, I actually have a problem. Yeah. And, and two things happened, number one, Things started to turn around quickly at home, but the the second thing that happened was that it changed my perspective because I wasn't judged by these guys. Yeah, there was zero judgment in the room, and I used to always think because I was always taught, well, don't don't say anything because they're going to judge you. They're going to see you in a different light, and God just told me, dude, they're sinners just like you are. You're a sinner just like they are. They struggle, you struggle. It's okay to talk about it. And I never thought about it because my whole life, people had talked to me about things that they've been going through. And it, I mean, whether it's cheating or, I mean, which is the really a, a bad thing or anger issues or whatever. And I never judged the people that I talked to, mm -hmm. but I never felt like I was going to be afforded that same luxury when in fact, I was given that in spades. No one judged me. And from that point forward, then I had other guys, they would come up to me on occasion, hey, dude, how are things going? And it just made me feel good. And it made me feel like, wow, man, these, these dudes actually care about Judd the person, not just because I'm a pastor or whatever. And it just, so my advice to circle all the way back around, my advice is just be open and honest with your inner circle of buddies. That's good, man. Because they're not going to judge you. They're going to love on you, and they're going to give you some backbone that maybe you didn't have, and they're going to give you some advice that you didn't know that they could give you. That's good, brother. That's really, really good. And if you don't have that, if you don't have that inner circle of friends, that circle of buddies, man, like we have life groups for a reason. We 100%. have men's breakfast for a reason. We just show up, and yeah. we'll take care of the rest. Yeah, I, I mean – we, an, another thing too is this um because of what i do on sundays i can't be involved in a life group yeah and god just impressed upon me several years ago dude you're not doing it right yeah you know you've uh, you've heard i don't there's an old movie it's called mr mom you've probably never seen it it's michael keaton michael keaton yeah and and he drives he's dropping the kids off for the first time at the school at school and he pulls through the wrong way and literally everybody, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. Then the lady tells him to roll down the window and she, and he's like, yeah. And she goes, you're doing it wrong. And God literally just uh, almost audibly said, Judd, you're doing it wrong. You are meant to be in relationship with others. And so I started a life group in, in Wiley and we are 14 strong all the time. And from that, I have my group of guys. Yeah, I love it, man. Yeah. Really appreciate you taking time to do this. Oh, I and love it. This is great. You're doing a great work, man. Hey, you are doing a great work. And uh, really appreciate you more than you know. I appreciate it, man. All right, brother. All See right. you. Deuces. Yep.